Welcome back to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. Poland versus Portugal, 16 to 11. Poland was in control, just like our, uh, our casters said. Uh, they managed to use Bialik the best way they could. Uh, this is just a <laughs> correct example how to use a superstar in a team. Yep. yep. Yeah? I, not, not only, only use him, but he had an amazing game. He had 28, 29 tracks, something like that. A couple of times he was just able to defend that A side alone on the CT side. Uh, in the second round of the T side, we saw him. I mean, I mean, you usually see those uh, drops, the, the AK dropped, maybe a Galil if you have money. Uh, but in that case, all players buy. Uh, but that round, I mean, they only, they probably, not probably, they, they just went all in on Bialy. Uh, he was the only one with the killer and yeah. the only one with the gun. And he makes it work, finds a double kill, wins them the round. So. Uh, Bialy just having an amazing game, but not only him, Mihu also had a, a pretty good game for him, helping Bialy uh, defend that day, so a pretty, pretty strong showing from Poland. Portugal was trying to get back from that first half, but they just, uh, that first half just wasn't good enough. Yeah, I, I think Poland really played good that control of mid. I think one, at one time they, they went for a fast control, at second time they, they, they were slow, patient with the Molotovs, with smokes and uh, and all, all of the, the that utility, and they really uh, played it well. As I said, I, they have Neo and Virtus Pro is really good of that control of uh, of mid and Mirage, and what they want to do, what they want to do after they after they take control of that uh, mid. And uh, honestly, uh, Portugal had a really good showing here and there on their city side. Like they had a couple of uh, let's say comebacks uh, from uh, from four v three. 4v2 and then make it uh, make it back to to win the round. But uh, I think experience from the Poland play, uh, Polish players actually stepped uh, stepped in here and they yep. won it pretty convincing, convincingly. As we said, they had control of that match throughout the whole match. Yeah, uh, I think we already mentioned, but let's <coughs> make it official. Man of the match, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. Bialy. Um, he was able to win a couple of rounds for uh, Poland. Uh, on his own, so I would say Bialy, uh, not only because of the frags, but because of the impact he had in that second round, a couple of rounds on the CT side, even uh, on the T side, besides the second round, he had a couple of rounds where he, where he got the triple kill, so I mean, just, just an amazing performance from him. Yeah, Bialy showing why uh, he plays for, well, one yep. of the best teams uh, out there in the world. Uh, the second match of the day, Norway versus Kazakhstan. Before we get into that, in just a couple of seconds. I just want to remind our viewers about the giveaway we are having. So you need to show us how you support your nation. So take a picture of yourself supporting your nation uh, with a flag or something else and post it on Facebook or on Twitter with a hashtag TWC2016. For more info about the giveaway, you can go to bit.ly slash TWC2K16. This is one of the examples, uh, the supporter from Romania. So try to out, out best this picture and win some awesome uh, also mouse pads, jerseys, uh, skins, fade case, knife, replica, and so on and so on. Okay, Norway versus Kazakhstan, the second match in Group A. Your thoughts? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think uh, both of these nations brought their good lineups, let's say, or the best lineups. Uh, we have uh, we have really good players from Norway, we have really good players from Kazakhstan, as we saw, like Moe and Adrian, uh, in a previous match, they really stepped up. They were close in terms of frags, both at uh, plus 16, plus 17. And they pl played really good that match against Croatia, even though they lost that dust 2 but I think that dust 2 was really... Yeah, just well, a hiccup, I guess. Yeah, uh, and well played by Croatia not to take yeah. anything away from them. We didn't expect them to win that dust 2 and they showed us that they can do it. So, all in all, I, ho I hope Kazakhstan has something more prepared. The, then they have uh, they had last time against Croatia. I think they lacked a bit of communication and and team play here and there. But Mo and Adrian were there to step up as their star players and uh, take a win for Kazakhstan. Yeah, we didn't get to see Norway so far since they were a seeded team in this yeah. in this round. Uh, we get to see Kazakhstan in the second qualifying round. But let's see the whole lineup of Kazakhstan if they will play in the same lineup uh, as they played against Croatia. Okay, well, for Kazakhstan we have uh, Mo, Adrian, Hobbit, Zlax, or Zlax, and uh, Fitch. 
So Adrian, Adrian and Mo are playing for Gambit. As, as we all know, they had really good performance against Croatia. Uh, as I said, like uh, they uh, they had 16-3 win on overpass, uh, losing 13 to 16 dash two and 16-6 on cash. Then we have Fitch, a uh, really good uh, rifler for for Kazakhstan. He really played good. He stepped up when they needed him, even though he maybe didn't have as much as good performance as uh, they needed him to 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 be in that performance. But he definitely can step up. Uh, then we have Hobbit, uh, the teammate of Fitch. They they are. Uh, Playing in a team called Tangri, if I'm not mistaken. So, and we have Zilex currently with no team, but he, he has a potential to to take one if he performs good. Yeah, straight away yeah. moving on to the lineup of Norway since we don't have much time. So, H. Yep, Norway coming up with a pretty strong lineup, uh, bringing the, the, their best players, JKM and Rain, yep. are the two guys from FaZe. Uh, Norway, like you said, we didn't see them so far because they were seeded, and that's why, that's because they were in the quarterfinals of the last TWC, lost to Russia uh, in that match. Uh, this time they're going to have uh, Poli, Rain, Skirk, JKM and Kale, and uh, this maybe not like with, by firepower. This maybe not the, the strongest uh, lineup uh, from uh, Norway. Of course, Rain and Jakem are definitely the two best players from Norway. But you could uh, you know ask the, why is there no Rubino, no uh, Mystique, no Reeston. Uh, Reeston. Uh, that those those are the guys that played in the last year's TWC. But I actually think that they went for a kind of a, a whole lineup because Poly is an AWP player. He's also the in-game leader. They all know each other. They played at some point in LGB, in London Con Conspiracy uh, way back. So I really like uh, the, the lineup from Norway. And uh, uh, with Rain and JKM, I would say they're uh, the favorites here, even though uh, Kazakhstan has the duo from Gambit. I would say Norway is a slight favorite in this one. Yeah, whenever I read these last names from uh, Norwegian players, I feel like I'm watching Vikings, you know, yeah. <laughs> Nigard and so on. Okay, going straight to Davido and let's see which map will be played. Yep. In their match yep, against uh, Kazakhstan, um, uh, I mean, against Croatia, oh. Kazakhstan, yeah, Kazakhstan against Croatia, against Croatia. Uh, they banned Cobblestone and picked Dust2. The second ban was Nuke, so we'll see if uh, Kazakhstan is going to stick with the same game plan or they're going to switch it up. I hope no, not. Hope not. Norway. I mean, I saw uh, Phase last night playing uh, against uh, Astralis, Mirage, and Dust Two were the maps, and I would Phase played really well. Although I gotta say, it was mainly on Kirishima. He was playing out of his mind. Uh, some really nice uh, clutches, nice headshots. But all in all, uh, I think Rain is having uh, an amazing. Uh, he his form is improving lately, uh, pretty much. Kazakhstan sticking with that same game plan as I said, banning Kobol, and it's going to be a Mirage ban from Norway. So we see Dust to ban, maybe. I think they need to ban that Dust to. I think they, they really didn't play or perform well against Croatia. Uh, I think he, I mean, they uh, should definitely remove that one, but they go for train, the nuke. Yeah, we have all those cobblestone train nuke out of the picture. Okay, uh, Overpass is the only yeah, one left I, I think that that map favors both of these nations, I would say. Kazakhstan won pretty convincingly against Croatia. They had really good performance. And that Norway has to choose between... Yeah, North. Kazakhstan picking Dust2 last time, but I guess they so found out they're uh, not yeah. as strong as Overpass. they think on that Dust2. And they're gonna ban it, so... Cash or overpass? Cash. Norway decides to go for a cash. So starting the day with Mirage, followed by, uh, by cash. cash. Pretty, pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, yesterday yeah. we had uh, double Mirage, cash, and overpass, Cobble. I think. Cobblestone. Cobble. Yep, cobblestone. Okay, cash. Uh, cash it will be. So Norway yeah. versus Kazakhstan. Yeah. Your thoughts on this map? Yeah, well, uh, Kazakhstan already played uh, against Croatia that cash, one in six into six, yep. uh, pretty convincingly, but Norway has a really good firepower and they have really good players that love to, pay, uh, to play that cash, phases, uh, phase players especially. They won against Virtus Pro 16 to 0, uh, strong meme there. So I would, uh, I would go with uh, Norway 
winning against uh, winning this one. Yeah, you just mentioned that you like that this lineup of Norway because you think they're a, a complete, a whole team. Yep. Do you think that's a slight edge comparing to Kazakhstan players? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about that aggression from from uh, Mo and Adrian. Uh, always trying to to get those picks, even when that's uh, not maybe necessary. Well, well, maybe they kind of feel pressure that uh, it's pretty much all on them. Yeah. I mean, we saw I think uh, Fitch had a, a good game against yeah. Croatia, but all in all, it was Adrian and Mo show they need to carry the Kazakhstan, um, you know, in the qualifiers. Yeah. So maybe they feel that pressure and uh, play a little bit more aggressive than they they're used to, uh, just to try and uh, get their team an advantage. For Norway, I definitely think uh, they have an advantage in a sense uh, that, yeah, uh, Poli, they all, first, thing, first things first, they all know each other, they played at some point uh, together. I remember Rain playing for that uh, London Conspiracy or LGB yeah. at that point. And the funny thing, he goes on to play for an international team, G2, and they replaced Rain with Jakim, who is unknown at that point, and he's even better than Rain. <laughs> yeah. So they, they all know uh, each other pretty well. They have a kind they of have a, an upper, a yeah, form, form team. Leader. Two guys, Poli and uh, Kale from Epiphany Bolt, uh, Rain and Jakim from Faze and Skirk from Panthers. Uh, I really like the lineup from Norway, and I would uh, agree with Rema that they are the favorites here. Okay, quickly with the predictions, Rema. 16-10 for 16, 10, Norway. 10, Norway. I would agree, 16-10. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start. Norway versus Kazakhstan. Skroni and Swoich takes away, boys. Thanks. Welcome back. Welcome back. Swoich, you're joining me again for another one. Kazakhstan, Norway. The fast, what looks like, A play here. Kazakhstan's going to be on that CT side with a kit in hands. Lex could always go for the retake on the site, but they have committed players to the back of it. It's going to be Moo behind quad attempting to hold off this push but a nice smoke flash thus far from norway moo's going to be coming out for the wide peak now jakim and paulie though oh too many frags for the side of the terrorists as they entry into the site zelex tagged out as well 26 points of health but the flank coming in from fitch at the time being could actually pan out norway still with four players up one man advantage here skirt getting into a bit of an engagement zelex finding the headshot but it's traded back from kalistar Fitch now, that's with the flanker down, so both players pushing in from the site itself. Hobbit, he's going to be trying to clear out a main, but he also drops, and now it will be all too easy. Norway, going to explode out onto that A site, and hold it off with ease, picking up the pistol. Yeah, Norway, even though uh, Kazakhstan had the read, Fitch, uh, Fitch <laughs> uh, pushing that B site, getting all the info for Kazakhstan, and they had four guys on A, even though that was the case, Norway, uh, brute force into the site. The hard hitters go down. Mo and Adrian denied straight away. Uh, they get into the site, get, in, get the bomb plant, and uh, grabbing some nice postman positions after that, winning the round. Norway is now going to go for a B site and uh, find no one there because, as we see, Kazakhstan going for that um, A stack and they're going to miss completely. Norway is going to get a free plant here. And in, it will be interesting to see if Kazakhstan decides to save those um, Kevlars and pistols because they won't have the money in the next round anyway. And I don't see them winning this one when you when you're on uh, when you're in a you know weaker position uh, firepower wise, and you allow them to get a free bomb plant. There's no way you're winning this one. No. I'm completely with you here. I think they should just fall back and save, grandfather all this stuff into the next one. Maybe look for exit frags. Yeah. I think that would be excusable. If they lose one or two players in the process, it's not so bad. But I don't think they believe in their chances of retaking. And they haven't actually committed all too much. Now here's Fitch with the CZ. Going to be grabbing one frag. Looking to fall back after he takes down Skirk. So that's damage dealt and a weapon drop. They know it. You can see it. Fitch looking to come back here. Looking to contest for that weapon itself. But he has to be cautious. Rain from behind. He is going to kill back for Norway in a second at that. So three players do survive with their armor and their pistols. That's not too bad for Kazakhstan. But of course, when they gamble onto the A site like that, all five players there, there's always the possibility of losing the round entirely. And that's exactly what happens. So Norway, they get, uh, I'd say, kind of lucky that they find the site that's wide open. They read into the situation and they convert the point. Well done on them. Kazakhstan going to be having those same pistols here in the next round uh, and, and looking forward to just, you know, getting into that rifle game. Norway looking to make bank in a fast mid presence from Jakim. That's actually going to be the first casualty of the round. Adren finding the headshot onto Skirk as well. Hobbit, my lord, two-man advantage for Norway and also rain tagged to 25. This is an incredibly sketchy situation. Hobbit with another frag. Two players up, one of them's damaged. 
Five v two. This is incredibly doable here from Kazakhstan. And Kazakhstan now right away going for another play, uh, getting pop flashed into that A main, and now they have info that no one's there. At least uh, wasn't there. Kelly now going for that peak. Uh, I mean, the, the, you see it. Uh, you see what those saved pistols can do in the in the following round. Even though you have t two teammates that went down and have no uh, Kellar or upgraded pistols. Hobbit finds a double, Adrian finds a one of his own, and now they picked up an, a P90 and an AK, so... Rain on 27 and Kelly on 100 HP, 2v5, I don't think this is doable now for Norway, 40 seconds to the end of the round. They're gonna go for B, but the thing is, 5v2, Kazakhstan has two players on B, and now they all need, they need to do is stall the attack, so the rotation can come in. Good job, Fitch playing for headshot, will be the casualty, Rain jumping in with that ump is denied from behind. Adren peeking wide from heaven, so mentioned so much grandfathering those weapons. It actually pays off. They find that opening in a round they have no business winning. Yeah. Um, you don't see this I, usually. When nice you... initiatives. Yeah. You don't see really this... nice initiatives. They took the fights, and and when you take fights like that, when you don't allow your your opponent to kind of uh, you know use their own game plan, then that's when you can create openings. And quite clearly, with those double frags all over across the map, and then you immediately see it when they go in towards that A main push. Uh, they they wanted to even in the five versus two take the fight to Norway They didn't want to let them kind of tr create an opening elsewhere a bit of a chance is created when headshot is cleared out by rain on that B site But then of course Adren had already had time to rotate in so yeah. Kazakhstan just all over that run Yeah, I mean uh, you don't usually see that when uh, you go for a force buy uh, and you save three of them uh, losing that second one you win the, the, the third one just because Hobbit, I mean that uh, CZ finding the double kill, uh, Agent chiming in with his with the one of his own and basically denying Norway that what should have been an easy round uh, just because they saved. And now Kazakhstan, uh, they call, called for a technical pause, but uh, this is a nice turn of events for them. Uh, not only that they won the round, they survived on four, four players, picked up seven guns, so their economy is, even though they lost the first round, their economy is looking uh, pretty okay now. I mean, you see, Adrian, 4.8 is Lex, 4.4 mode, 3k, so uh, if, considering they lost the pistol round, this is uh, looking pretty fine, and if they can win another one, uh, a consecutive round here would break uh, Norway's economy. As the game will continue, oh. Norway going for a fast uh, mid-boost, but they don't expect Hobbit that close to the vents. He finds a double kill, JKM and Kale going down. And this is a great start for Kazakhstan, as, as I said. Um, if they win this round, they're gonna break economic, uh, economy of Norway completely. Three players staying alive for Norway, Norway uh, and it seems like they wanna go for an A site. They, they threw the smokes, but they're gonna go for a, a, a somewhat slower pace. Kazakhstan rotating three players into A, as Rain is trying to creep up, but the nice pop flash, Agent's gonna spot ahead. He's gonna take him out. Flex now spotting the guy in A main. He gets uh, well. He gets denied. Qualifying a kill, but that's all that Kazakhstan, uh, sorry, that Norway got in that round, and a fantastic round for Kazakhstan. Hobbit opening it up with that nice double kill on mid. Yeah, that, that double kill from Hobbit was absolutely instrumental because that drops two of the players with AK-47s. And we saw going into the site that uh, Polly, I believe, or Skirt, one of them still had that Desert Eagle. So. Already those primary weapons were an issue, and especially when you drop two of the uh, the limited weapons straight out the gates. Hobbit doing great job early, as Fitch has done yet again. A kill over towards the B site, with Bomb is currently headed. Three players for Norway still there, looking to trade frag back. Of course, this one just being pistols should be done and dusted quite quickly. But Kazakhstan is actually going to take some damage in return, and Adren not yet landing the frag will nail it. And the bomb carrier now drop. Hobbit rotating in. That's going to be the last one. So again, we have a round where Kazakhstan's only lost a single player. And these are the sorts of rounds that are going to uh, create loads and loads of money for them. You can still still, still see they have two of those AK-47s in play. Uh, and that's why both uh, uh, Mu and Adrian have 8,000 and 10,000 respectively. Just so much cash flow thus far from Kazakhstan. And that's great for the CT side of cash. Because even once Norway start winning a couple of rounds, they need to, they need to dig deep within those costs.
coffers in order to root out all of the money. And uh, Kazakhstan has been doing a good job of staying alive. Looking to do it again here in this round. Fitch taking the fight towards B. He'll find the first kill. Rain unable to trade back because the smoke grenade provides an exit. And now immediately Kazakhstan is going to have that man advantage and play accordingly. Adren is still, of course, applying some pressure here inside of the checkers. Looking to find an angle towards Rain, who is just popping shots off. But it is Kala who actually gets a kill from Squeaky. So he's incredibly damaged in the process. Now sitting on 15 points of health. But he cleared the player from behind Forklift. And putting this back to uh, an equalized 4v4 actually helps Norway a lot. Yeah, and it's a 4v4. The side is always favored uh, in that uh, scenario. And they're going to go for a boost mid. But I like the response from Kazakhstan. Um, they, they go for a, a main push right away. They got all the info and that enables the, that uh, agent to rotate back to B. So um, nice read from Kazakhstan. Having, uh, just having Mo in A main, seeing that no one's coming there, uh, enables them to, to, to have two guys on B in this 4v4. So Norway not in that advantage anymore as they have to find two kills and the bomb plant to, to you know, just, just to get um, into this round. They're gonna find the first one on Fetch, but do they know that Adrian is there? He finds another kill on uh, Rain, gets a headshot there, and another one drops the bomb for the second time, and Mo is now in the rotation. Uh, it leaves down to Mo, one with two. Kala is pretty tagged. Mo, they, I, they don't expect him to come from here, but Kala, their positions are quite good. He might actually find the kill onto the site first. There it is. Takes down Skirk immediately. He's going to start to respond, Whoa. and he whips to the headshot. Mo with an absolutely phenomenal 1v2. Again, we, they didn't expect him to be coming from that position, and you see it. The element of surprise pans out. Now, of course, the second player being so close, that was a very 50-50 opportunity for either player in this situation. Mo landing the headshot, making it look easy. Greatly done. Kazakhstan, of course, this is going to be an expensive round for them. That's going to be the closest that uh, Norway has come in the gun rounds so far to taking one. And yet they rebuy with ease. They rebuy and still have 9,000 on Adren. Still have 6.6 .6 sitting on Mo. Uh, Mo, sorry. And then Norway, they're forced with the uh, pistol buy. So they're going to be looking to take it towards the B site again. But Fitch, this is the third round now he's gotten aggressive inside B main. Every time he plays a different spot, though. So let's see if this one works out. Rain walking through the smoke. He's going to be the first casualty. Fitch lining him up and knocking him down like dominoes. Two more frags, or excuse me, one. Adren is actually going to chime in for the third one. Fitch continuing the pressure here. The flashbang helping out, but with that USP in hand, he is going to be the first casualty to the side of Kazakhstan. Adren with another kill through the edge of the smoke. Now just leaving it down to Kala, who is still dancing around here. Finding headshots onto Hobbit, but not finding frags. It is Norway still on two. Kazakhstan up to five. And that one, again, an expensive round for Norway. Well, Kazakhstan's just making money. Yeah, Kazakhstan winning five in a row, actually. And Fitch, once again, getting them that uh, entry kill. And yeah, we talked about it in the analyst desk that Mo and Adrian, they're the hard hitters in Kazakhstan. But, I mean, Fitch and uh, Hobbit, uh, their team, Tangri, they just uh, got into the one the open qualifier for uh, epicenter in moscow and they're gonna play in the in the close qualifier so they definitely know how to play this game called uh, counter strike global offensive so you gotta keep an eye on them too as fetch is fetch and hobbit both i think are having a, a pretty pretty good game so far and they're Kazakhstan, even though they lost the game. pistol round and the, the consecutive one now look completely in the lead their economy is quite good so all in all kazakhstan so far being the best out of the two on this cache. Norway once again want to go for that um, some kind of a peak on uh, on A, like uh, Kala did in that one round. But talking about Kala, he's gonna get denied by Adrian in A main. Adrian getting another kill, and that's that star player that we talked about. Hobbit, there you go, he finds a kill on Skirk on mid, and now it's all on JKM and Polly. JKM, he's gonna reveal himself in squeaky and rotate quickly to Polly as Polly looks to go into the B site but the thing is Fitch is still there. Ooh and Fitch she's gonna be laying down the incendiary to buy time still spraying connecting shots but not the kill as of yet. Polly returning damage and creating an opening here. He's gonna be able to find himself into the site with the bomb plant if he commits but Time is running out as the CTs do start to flood down upon him. He'll tap the bomb. The CTs are going to start pushing it forward, but that's another one. Clean headshot before Zlex trades frags back. Kazakhstan with another on the board. And uh, 
Ah, Norway, not able to find much footing there. Again, Adren getting aggressive inside of A main is what works out. And honestly, thus far from the CT side, I think it's their aggression and their dynamic pushes that has been actually finding so many rounds, or at least why the rounds seem so convincing. We've seen, of course, uh, Fit Hobbit inside of mid. We've seen Fitch inside B main, and then Adren over here towards A main. All three of these players taking dynamic fights, and we mentioned seeing great things from all of them. So the scoreboard tells you right away, all three of those players clearly at the top of it and uh, continuing forward. But this time, Norway, they're going to be trying a bit of a mid-presence, and Jakim has already managed to get himself towards White Box. Pop Flash from Hobbit. That's going to be a nice peek off of Adren. Great teamwork to find an opening kill. And still, there are two players near the Jakim back towards one as Rain tries to clear out headshot, but currently it's just Fitch crouching too often. They can't find the kill. Hobbit now coming back with kills Whoa. of his own. Adren doing it as well. And I mean, it's just Kazakhstan in charge of this. The rotation lands the moment those players push in. Fitch burns so much time by just creating their uh, creating an opportunity to take all of that attention. Kazakhstan with another... Uh, Hobbit and Adrian going for that peak mid. They, the Hobbit gets a kill there. And then Norway, the response was correct. They recognized that if there's two on mid, there's got to be only one on, on the B side. And there was, there was only Fetch in the headshot, but Rain couldn't connect his shots. And he just, Fetch stayed alive long enough for that tag team, tag team from mid, Hobbit and Agent, to come in and just clean up on that B side. And Kazakhstan winning, winning another pretty convincing round. And I mean, whoa, nice shot by Rain. There it and is. Polly opens up with uh, one of his own, so... Well, I wanted to say pistols are working out for Norway, but soon enough, Hobbit now finds a uh, triple kill. Can he find the quad? Yes, he can. Ooh. Quad kill for Hobbit, and he proved me right once again. I mean, he's so far top fragging for Kazakhstan, even though he has Adrian and Mo in his team. I mean, Mo's being quiet, and it's not even his fault. It's yeah. just there's no frags to be found with that. Obviously, him being the opera, he's in the back. We've seen him try to go at least for a couple of picks inside a main and whatnot, but just never finding it because Hobbit and uh, Adren elsewhere are getting all of the kills. And, and Norway, I mean, in all honesty, to see Rain, I mean, he had that beautiful Huandig to create some space in mid, but uh, four and nine, not where you necessarily expect him. So fraggers are uh, an unusual batch today. But Kala with the first one is Fitch is in a very off angle. We've seen him inside crazy spots over towards the B main. This time he jumps on top of the boxes here in A. And it's going to cost him his life. It's going to give Norway an opening opportunity. Man advantage, but Skirk incredibly tagged. He has to be cautious, as does their whole team. They don't want to give this back. They've very rarely been in a man advantage. And now that they're here, they can't afford to lose it. But you can see Kazakhstan already starting to prepare for some sort of play. The flashbang is going to be popping into A main, but Kala does a good job of waiting. And then the attention is pulled towards the back of it. Greatly done by Norway to play versus the flashes. And now immediately they're going to start to push. Of course, that smoke is late for truck, but it's not going to matter as Jakim finds a kill onto the site, opens up space, and then clears Mo, Mo from behind. Norway, explosive round there. The second they had the opportunity, they played it properly, and they yep. capitalized on it to grab themselves a third round. Norway just getting the first pick on Fetch in A main and just recognizing that th thus far Kazakhstan is pro playing really proactively, really just not aggressive but um, really active on that defense on the CD side and they recognize that, uh, waited patiently for that push that Kazakhstan uh, eventually did in A main and got the double kill, opened the round completely, got uh, the last kill on A and then uh, Mo gets caught on mid rotating back to A so Nice round for Norway. The thing is, they need at least two or three more in this half to, to, to you know, for, for the, this half to be good enough. Eighth and three, 12 rounds in, 11 rounds in, 12 rounds in into the game. That's not, not good enough from the T side of uh, cash. And it, not only that, the, the money for Kazakhstan is through the roof. Mo, he, wanted, he needed to buy that AWP again, yeah. so his money is kind of broken, but the rest of them, I'm pretty sure they're pretty fine. They could they could still work out some sort of quasi gun round uh, if they need to force here. So Norway definitely with a chance to get one up onto the board, but they'll have to not just get through this first gun round, whatever comes after it. And Kazakhstan, they've had enough of waiting around. They're going to be taking the play towards Norway in the form of a B main push. And this is going to put them right behind enemy lines. They spot Skirk rotating. They take the kill for ease. That's just one, and they fall back immediately. So very well done into the man advantage. But now, do Norway react accordingly? Do they take up the pace and go straight for the A site? That's a two-man push towards B, but Skirk doesn't know because his back was turned. 
So I think if they had seen so many players over there, they would have picked up the pace. Instead, they wait, and it's going to cost them. Mo with another kill. Kallus is going to bring it back by one, but Hobbit again chiming in with a response before Rain goes big. Comes up highway, takes down two, but Adrian answering back. Two versus one here, favoring Kazakhstan. Norway on the site with the bomb will get the plant. And now it's up to Jakim. This is a world star player. Absolute monster with the first headshot. But he switches to Fitch. It's a clutch for Norway. A huge round, and it means a lot. Kazakhstan, of course, will still have money to uh, potentially buy here, or at least juggle around some sorts of weapons. But that one was big, and Jakim shows up when he's needed. Yeah, Norway's star players uh, really stepping, stepping up big in that round for Norway. Rain with a double kill, allowing uh, Jakim to get a bomb plant, and J then Jakim clutching it 1v2. Uh, a nice, nice round from Norway. And Kazakhstan, we saw them again in that last round, again going for a push. Uh, that time it was B, Adrian and uh, Fitch going for the B push, getting the kill on mid, backing off. I mean, Kazakhstan, as you said, I mean, they're kind of unpatient, but still they're not getting punished for it. And Norway not really switching their plan uh, round after round. We see Jacob in this um, squeaky position trying to find something on A. And this, find he's, this time he's going to find Zlax as he's going to get uh, taken down and early advantage for Kazakhstan. Hobbit, I think he spotted Hobbit's a couple of guys in main main. He's going to get Molotov, but not killed. Zlex finding another kill in that squeaky area. Pop flash into A. They're now in trouble. No, no one. Counter flashes were there, so no one's getting wow. through to that A site. Kala though. Kala and Rain. Now they've got the two. That's going to clear out the site for the most part. Still Fitch. Is, excuse me, Mu is still sitting inside of Highway. Fitch is the player rotating up from Truck, so he's going to have to get into position if they want to try to surmount this comeback. They've done a good job of at least holding A for a long time, but the explosiveness from Norway does give them the site. Polly to connect the op shot, and now that's going to put Fitch in the 1v3. The Molotov currently on the side of the forklift is dealing damage, but unless he's just repositioning himself towards Highway, he might just be looking to save that AWP because the money currently for the side of Kazakhstan is now broken. Taken a while, but Norway has done it. They have emptied the coffers of the Kazakhstani players, and now they're looking to kill them all. Fitch still looking to escape here. He does have so much armor, kit, everything, but be cautious. Rain potentially pushing out here. He takes the angle, and it doesn't pan out. Rain with a very nice off angle, just waiting for the peak. Fitch goes out, and now that's going to be an entire sweep here of the Kazakhstan team. P250 is making a bit of an appearance, but Norway with a very good opportunity and a very real chance of potentially not just finishing this 8-6, but uh, to get that 7th one as well, because they're going to have everything they could ask for regardless of these outcomes. They've, they've got at this point the money they've needed. They've been able to take the momentum back with three rounds in a row. Very late in the game, but still better late than never. Skirk with the first kill out towards mid. Tried to answer back his Hobbit, but he too drops. Jakim applying pressure and immediately falling back as Norway through the vents towards the B site. Zlex will have to hold the line all on his lonesome. Fitch rotating in is going to be the first player. Of course, Mo hot on his heels, but again, Zlex is alone for the time being. And players have managed to cross out towards the highway. Kala, he's going to find one more. Rain committing to the plant, but they never cleared the back of the site, and Zlex is going to be buying a lot of time here. Walks on out, grabs the AK. Mo able to hit two. Polly, he's going to save the day, but Norway losing three players in that engagement, considering it was a Five versus one on the site at first before the rotation al arrives. That was kind of scary for the side of Norway. Of course, they win. They're happy with that. But they'll be buying into this next round regardless as are Kazakhstan. It has gone the distance. And we get one last gun round to close things out. Yeah. Zlex did a pretty good job of staying hidden uh, throughout that whole B take from Norway. He denies the bomb plant and then Mo jumps through the smoke. Tries to help his teammate and gets a double kill. Whoa, poorly. Gets a kill on Adrian, but that could have been a double kill if they lined up correctly. And Norway gets a fast entry. Now Jacob once again in the squeaky area trying to find a connection through the door. There's a Molotov from Kazakhstan as he's gonna get denied there, but he's gonna stick around and uh, try and fi find something. There's Lex on short, so maybe he can find a, a kill there. But I want to say Norway uh, really slow paced so far. I mean, on their whole T side, they've been playing really, really slow. The only round, round they, we saw them speed up was that second round when they knew that they are against pistols and the last one taking fast mid control. So they're really respecting the firepower of um, Kazakhstan, it seems. 
I and think that uh, at this point it's kind of been forced on them. Hobbit and Adrian have been done, been doing a very good job of yeah. just of playing from off angles, playing from corners, just big individual multi kills, and that's the kind of stuff that makes you scared because you, even if it's one player, you can always connect crazy amounts of shots. But Fitch this time will be the first casualty. Mo also going to be answering back here for the side of Kazakhstan. That's two kills on the entry, equalizing it to the 3v3. Of course, they've got Zlex behind the enemy lines looking for the flank, but will he nail the timing? Currently, Jakim not looking in the direction, caught with a nade out. Zlex with the frag will take the man advantage back to the favor of Kazakhstan, looking to pick the pace, but Pauly from the back of the site watching heaven. Beautiful off shot to at least equalize yet again, and more damage as he finds the other kill. Both players incredibly tagged. Zlex up close and personal. Pauly with the sidearm in hand, able to get back behind the boxes and create some more space, but he's laying down lead and clutching out rounds. Pauly with, uh, with three kills in the site, four frag in the round, and a seventh round for Norway. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, uh, after Zlex got the kill on Jcam and Polly was left uh, in a 2v3, uh, Mo with a kind of a sloppy peek on upper, he gets taken down by Polly, but the second shot was insane. Uh, a really fast flick from Polly, and he clutches around, wins the seventh on, from Norway. And uh, when it was 8 to 3, I said Norway needs to win at least two or three rounds more, and they won all of them to the end of the half. So a really nice comeback from Norway makes it a 8 to 7 going into the second half as Kazakhstan looks to go for a fast A-take uh, in their pistol round. There are two players from Norway there, Rain, he's gonna be the first to spot him. Can he find some headshots with the USP? Not so far. Kelly's gonna Towards find mid, a, a kill on mid, but that's not enough because Kazakhstan is into the A site. All are dead except JKM, he's gonna rotate all the way from B as he needs to find a triple kill here and a bomb defuse to win this round for Norway. Their post plan positions are quite good. Uh, Adrian is tagged, but uh, this is going to be hella hard for JKM. He sneaks up from highway. He's gonna spot the first player, spots Adrian too. So he at least knows two positions now. He's gonna find the first catch oh. on Hobbit and the second one on Adrian. And now it's a 1v1. Uh, JKM versus Lex, can he find a kit somewhere? I don't, need, I don't know if they even had a kit. He's now gonna find the information that Lex is in A main. He's gonna go for an attack. Zlax is going to hide behind the box. Can Jake can find this, the third one? He cannot, but that was a se nice second kill. I mean, that flick was insane. I just checked all the dead bodies. There was no kit, so... Whoa. At least, I don't think so. Uh, and not on the site, anyways. It could have been elsewhere on the map. Of course, we did see players die out in towards middle as well. Um, but at least on the site, there was no kit, so that one was going to be impossible for Jakeem. Um, nice try though, and I mean, yeah. what a crazy, what a crazy two frags just immediately. I mean, remember that was a three v one at one point. What looked like Kazakhstan holding off the site entirely, and then all of a sudden, bitch, be laying down lead. Rain able to fall back from a main, escapes with his life and twenty points of health. A difficult position already for Norway, as they're incredibly damaged. Kazakhstan with map control. Of course, they're not, not, not much of a presence mid here. You can see Skirk sniffing around, thinking about pushing into the garage. He will now start to do exactly that. So this is a nice bit of information. He'll be able to get the audio cues from Hobbit pushing in towards a main right now. With Zlex finding an entry frag out towards the A site, obviously Norway know that it is this site anyways. So the info on the audio, not going to be too valuable. But Bomb should cross, will plant. Fitch playing this MAC-10 from behind the forklift. He's going to take an after plant. But again, it's just the rifles here dominating the side of Norway. Every time they take these peaks, they're just being pummeled with bullets. And that's going to leave just Jakim again as the last man. But he's still over here towards B. Still holding that flashbang. Yeah, he's really, really um, patient. May, although Norway, I think they have a technical pause in the next, next round. So um, this could be JKM dropping out. Yeah. Because there's no way he's, he's really still committed to that. this flashbang. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could say he's really, really patient. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I guess uh, JKM uh, dropped out. Uh, it's going to be the 10th round on the board for Kazakhstan. And um, well, we said, I think uh, our predictions were uh, the same 16 to 10 for Norway. So for us to be correct, Norway needs to find uh, all the rounds at the end of the game. Uh, but it's going to be hard considering that they're going to be on a, an eco in this one. Kazakhstan, so far, so far they're, they're really surprising me. Not only, I mean, like you said, Mo is quite quiet in this uh, He's quiet in this game, but it's not because he's not hitting his shots. It's just he has no chance. 
uh, because Hobbit and Adrian are pretty much collecting it all. And coming into this game, I mean, I would say everybody, I'd say we properly recognize oh, that Skirk. Kazakhstan has talent on this lineup, that they ha they had a chance of making this game competitive. Um, obviously, one would expect that the experience and firepower of Norway would be too much for them. But I think what's really unexpected was that if you had asked before this game started, what would be the key to Kazakhstan's success? Immediately, you'd say, Adren and Mo. Yeah. Those two players would be at the top if, in a situation, Kazakhstan was leading, Kazakhstan was winning. But what we have here is, is sure, okay, Adren is there, as expected, absolute all-star. Hobbit and Zlex, though, crazy amounts of frags. And even Fitch, I mean, he's dropped off since he had an impact, but early, early, early on yeah, yeah. in Norway's, or excuse me, in Kazakhstan's spree of CT rounds, I would argue it was him who created a lot of that space. He's the one who started that pattern. That, uh, that spree of rounds, and then we just see everybody else on Kazakhstan's side come just t capitalizing, toppling down on it, and now with Hobbit and Zlex up here, I'm just, this is not what I expected. Yeah. I mean, Fitch only having six frags, but like you said early on, out of those six, I think he had at least two, if not, tr uh, if not three, uh, entry kills for Kazakhstan, so, yep. uh, you know, maybe just six frags, but quite a uh, big impact with, uh, with that six, so... So far, like, like you said, Kazakhstan, I mean, their, their city side was quite good. Um, yeah, Norway kind of came back uh, winning five consecutive rounds uh, there at the end of the half. But, I mean, still, uh, their, their city side was quite good. Uh, winning the second pistol round, I mean, they're in a prime position to take this one. Although, Norway still has uh, quite a bit of time to, 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 you know, come back into the game. They're going to have at least uh, one... Yeah, one full buy for sure, and if they go for an eco, at least another one. So there, there's there's definitely a potential for Norway to come back. This is not lost yet. No, but the pistol is obviously exactly what Kazakhstan wanted. Yeah, uh, I would say after giving up those last five rounds, that's got to be somewhat heartbreaking, somewhat frustrating. Winning the pistol and then being able to at least convert one point off of it, already a good position for them to be in. And uh, speaking of their very successful CT side, I wanted to give credit to the amount of dynamic plays yeah, they threw into the mix. Exactly. We saw mid pushes, we saw mids being held back, we saw all sorts of pop flashes on both uh, B main and A main. Not to mention we saw, um, excuse me, we saw Hobbit just changing things up all over the sites, and it's it was really impressive. Obviously, every time that that we, we'd see Norway even get a bit of an advantage. Kazakhstan would try to take it back aggressively, or at least take it back with some sort of play. It wasn't always aggressive, but it was always an initiative. They always did something to try and counter the strategies and try to counter the round thus far from Norway. So that's what's really nice, is rather than playing a very passive CT half, where it was just sitting on the sites waiting for the terrorists to push, if they felt they had to take a fight, if they felt they had to create space, they absolutely went for it. And if anything, we mentioned how Norway was playing a very slow T side. Norway was giving respect and time to Kazakhstan, and I don't think that was a two-way street. I think Kazakhstan came to play. I think they just completely, you know, took the fight in that big spree of rounds. Sure, the price, and Norway picks up five. Hello? I'm not sure if uh, Scrawny is still with us. But yeah, yeah can I... You hear me? I kind of lost you at the end there, but I, I completely agree with you. I mean, uh, the way Kazakhstan played that CD side, you saw even, <laughs> we saw Fitch. I mean, he uh, got the entry kill in the B, uh, in front of the B site, and then he gets an entry in A main. Uh, we saw Hobbit and Adrian basically playing that tag team, uh, getting, uh, double, getting a kill on mid, then they rotate back to B and clean up. Even Hobbit, or no, it was Adrian uh, getting uh, that kill on Kale on in A main. They were constantly moving around, and well, basically, I mean, poor Mo. He, when they were on A, he was on B with an AWP. No one comes to B, and uh, like you said, I mean, he's only having nine frags, but honestly, he was pretty much out of action for for the majority of that CD half for uh, Kazakhstan. Also moving forward, yeah. Polly. Polly has impressed me with his op shots um, because he's been in a lot of situations where he needed to land them and he consecutively does. Uh, yep. Very consistently landing those kills when they, ma when they matter the absolute most. And uh, I mean, we saw it from the back of the B site, right? Yeah. When he's 
the, uh, on, on, on the 3K of the round. Yeah, and the and that was what was obviously getting Norway their victories, right, towards the end of it. And he is the man of, of, of kind of unexpected precedence, in my opinion. I, I kind of expected Rain to really be dominating the side of Norway, but it's nice to see all of these new bloods for both teams, or newer bloods for both teams, kind of stepping it up. Yeah, but you know, like we said in the, on the analyst desk, like Poly, uh, he played with Rain, played with uh, JKM uh, in the past. Before they mm. became superstars, uh, they played with him in uh, London Conspiracy and LGB, and he was always that upper for them, uh, also the in-game leader. So they all know pretty much, uh, uh, they all know each other uh, pretty well. So uh, we talked about it uh, in the pre-game segment, and I really like the lineup from Norway. So far, I mean, like you said, uh, I think Rain and JKM, yeah, they won them a couple of rounds. Uh, Rain uh, just, I think, in in those five that they won at the end of the half, there he at least won them the two the two of them because uh, you see them going for the A side, it doesn't look good for Norway. They're in a three v four, and then Rain comes up and gets a double kill and opens it up, and then JKM with that one clutch. So uh, they're doing their work. Just. Um, they need to find some more because they're currently losing uh, 10 to 7, probably 11 to 7 when uh, Jaken comes back since they're going to be on an eco. Talking about that eco, I mean, Skirk, he saw Jaken dropping out and just casually picks up that 5-7, uh, steals it from uh, Jaken. <laughs> Skirk, you cheeky little bugger. <laughs> Stealing the, the guns. Hopefully Jaken comes back soon enough and we can continue with the game. Talking about the games, uh, what do you think about uh, the, the two ones that come after this one? Sweden and Spain, and then uh, Germany and Finland. I'm incredibly excited to see the Swedish lineup for the first time. Yep. Uh, always a pleasure, obviously incredibly talented guys. And I think that even versus Spain, they might have a, a, a bit of a fight because we saw Spain earlier this week and, and they were looking quite decent when they played on the same day as Portugal. Um, so I think that's going to be a matchup that quite obviously you would have to say favors Sweden. Um, but it's going to be a nice test for, for them to kind of have that first opponent, right? We saw France yesterday uh, versus Estonia, and they just made quick work of their first game of the tournament. Um, I'm hoping that the same thing does not happen in the next game. I'd like to see at least a closer one, a good showing of both these teams, right? Because it's a good opportunity for these guys to kind of be on a bit of a stage. And um, so Sweden, 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 Spain, that's going to be a nice one. Sorry, the fourth one, what is it against which? Uh, Germany against Finland. Germany, Finland. I think that's going to be another close one. Um, yeah. I think that was coming coming in today. The first two games, I expected to be quite close, uh, and then the last one as well. Um, I just think it's, it's personally, I, I see it as a bit of a toss up. The German squad incredibly talented, um, but at the same time, again, it's a hard one to call. Yeah. And I think that yesterday was much easier I mean, because we saw yesterday all four of our kind of say expected teams move forward into the next stage or at least win their opening games. Um, Today, I think there's a lot more uh, ambiguity or a lot more question as to, to who will move forward or who will at least have that strong first match. Yeah, but uh, going back to the game, uh, we are on pause. We're going to continue. Uh, unfortunately for Norway, uh, Jakim, I guess, is not able to move on to play, uh, to play but um, Corny is going to join. And i got to say sorry to Corny because I have no idea who Corny is. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at his emblem, and I believe that's an Epiphany Bolt. Yeah, so now we have three guys from Epiphany Bolt, that's for sure. We have um, Kale, Polly, and Corny. Uh, but uh, I guess, I mean, you could say that's a gun downgrade going from Jaken to Corny, but we'll see. Maybe he's the man that Norway needs to make the comeback. Who knows? Here it is. This is, this is his breakout performance. This is his chance. Yep. And he'll be looking to come back into the B site, but I mean, Norway obviously onto the pistols. This one, this is this is not. They're going to be their round to win. Kazakhstan already firmly inside that site. Polly is well spotted, so he's going to be the contact man and already pushed out from that position in Norway. At this point, they have nothing to lose other than that one five seven. So I'm sure we'll see some sort of play made by them. Maybe Kazakhstan's even going to take the fight. Look at this, Adrenaline Fitch getting aggressive towards the bottom of the tree, and Rain finding a headshot here with that USP. Zlex is watching, or excuse me, Zlex was watching the flank. All of a sudden, three kills though. Hobbit, one man standing. Cal is alone. 1v1. Whoa. He closes the distance and grabs the headshot, but there's no kit on him. He's still making his way to the site. I think he has there plenty time. of time to defuse this. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna what? get this and 
I thought there's no way for Norway to win that round. They were only on uh, USPs. Skirk had that 5-7 that he stole from uh, JCAM, but you see it. Rain with a USP gets a kill. Kelle with the USP gets a triple kill against full armored Kazakhstan players. That's insane. And we were talking about the comeback, and there you go. Norway winning a full eco round. Whoa. With a 5-7 and a flashback. Yeah. That's, I mean, we saw some incredible stuff already these sorts of crazy rounds where where it's just a yesterday two p250s and a flashbang also on cash a site um it, it's it's crazy amounts of rounds that have been happening like that but i guess i uh, i shouldn't have wrote it off before we had already had our outcome somehow some way norway finding footing and finding themselves around but kazakhstan's looking to bounce back quickly because obviously that one hurts they are in a man advantage or man disadvantage but the health currently on the side of norway is already quite damning two players tagged up rain at 37 after he finds that first entry now that was a nice initiative for him he goes right into the a main boost takes a fight from the top of the boxes finds himself an entry frag and nearly a second as well in the exit so almost yep. had it still one it's better than nothing, and Kazakhstan going to be playing the slow T side for the time being. Of course, they do have Zelex right now from Squeaky, and with Skirk Flash, that was a nice chance. The Molotov will force him backwards straight into his crosshairs. Zelex with a nice return frag, and now a bit of footing here towards the ace site. Norway is going to be intelligent, though, rotating Polly up towards the truck. He's currently smoked out, and will very well have to at least get closer to the site if he wants to find some angles. Zelex now out from Squeaky, trying to deal with a player on the fence. That's Rain. Rain is dead. Headshot to at least clear out the site hobbit now from e-box as well taking Touchdown. those tight angles and a frag grenade dunks down upon his victim four players up to the side of kazakhstan and this one's looking good after uh, that very upsetting round before yeah can i find a found a triple kill with that usp gave them a round that they shouldn't have won and they lose the consecutive one he found only a kill on Zlex. Zlex uh with a nice round there uh getting a kill in in uh, forklift on um Skirk, and then through the smoke, uh, reads the play that Rain uh, throws at him, gets a nice headshot. They get into the side, they get a bomb plant. And now, Norway, again, trying to go for um, something crazy. Kala going for that AWP, and he's going to be a long guy on in the A side. I'm not sure how this should work out, because hmm, if he gets overrun, um, he's going to need to hit some insane shots with that AWP. But for now, Kazakhstan not opti opting to go for that fast A. Uh, it seems that they want to boost on mid. The thing is, there's two guys from um, Norway there. Skirk and Rain, and Rain has that Deagle. We already saw one uh, Deagle headshot from Rain. Maybe he can repeat that here. Ooh, no, Skirk. it's not going to be Rain. It's going to be Skirk. Finds a kill on uh, Adrian, and now our early advantage for Norway. They're boosting a player up. Kazakhstan definitely trying to push this issue. Hobbit, though. He has that AK oh. and he takes the shot to the head. Rain now chiming wow. in with another Fitch denied. And Calais with an op shot elsewhere on the map. That is Norway in a mere matter of seconds grabbing a four man advantage. Rain, that's what we needed. Yeah. Um, I mean, these pistols for Norway working wonders for the second time now. Rain nailing a sick double uh, headshots with the Deagle. I mean, the first one was. Insane, and then just uh, I guess he got the info from Skirk that uh, one guy is rotating down uh, on mid, gets another one dig, uh, crazy round from uh, from Rain in Norway. I mean, with these uh, pistol round wins, they're just uh, clinging on into this match. Uh, they win a round they're not favored in, and then they lose the full by one. And I mean, this time they're against uh, Tech Nines and P250s, so this has to be their round, right? Right? I don't know. There's a double op set up, and that could be scary. If they're able to close the distance of these players, then wonders could happen. Corny finding the one kill from the back of the site before Kale chimes in with the op in heaven. But he's switching out to his secondary now, and Kazakhstan's managed to get to the site. They should only be allowed a bomb plant. That is all. Hobbit picks up the AK and a Molotov as well, so that's going to be a little bit more to work with. The utility being thrown out towards heaven, and he grabs himself a kill. That's Rain coming in from the vents denied. Dren now taking the fight towards Tree. He's going to get a second. Kala also down, and Skirk now 1v3, taking it back with one frag, but it's not enough. And we tappins again and again and again. Switch. I can't handle it. I, I don't know. I kind of felt that this isn't going to happen. I called that uh, rain, uh, Deagle, and then I was asking myself, uh, I mean, Norway, are they going to finally string two rounds together? 
Guess not, because Asian gets a double kill with the Tech 9 and then picks up an op and closes it out. I mean, what's going on, Scrawny? What are we watching I here? I genuinely think that that was an issue, having an op inside of Heaven. Uh, it's an anti-eco round, and, and I mean, obviously they expected, I guess, a force buy of some sorts, more than what they did invest, but playing the op in Heaven, he's not able to support the player on the site, and then you just can't get the retake because the Molotov is then used to burn it off. So the only utility being used against them that round, this time it oh was going to be an opening frag from Kazakhstan using that boost. But now it's answered back with Skirk using that CZ. So 4v4, but the B site entirely open. Kazakhstan's going to get another plant here for free. This looks like the defense from the CTs the round before. Nice nade on Poly. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say Norway, they should boost up and pick up pick up that AK that Zyx dropped so they can save that into the next round. And that's exactly what they're gonna do. Corny is gonna... or not. Seems like they're going for it. I mean, when you win two consecutive rounds with the pistols, you kind of um, get confident that you can do it once again. But uh, Hobbit denies them. Skirk denies him, finds a nice kill, he can pick up that AK and take it away. Yes, he will, he's gonna save the AK. Polly is in a position maybe to take down uh, Fitch Fitch. That's three tags, Mo reads the play and finds the kill. And uh, Skirk is going to be the lone man surviving for Norway as Kazakhstan take num round number 13 and they're closer and closer to taking this one home, even though Norway, I mean, they're having some crazy round wins, but at the same time, they lost at least two or three rounds that they shouldn't have lost, so... For now, Kazakhstan just... having that lead and not losing it. And no AWP, you, you said it, Poli, he had some uh, nice uh, AWP... Uh, kills. This time he's going to be on an M4. Uh, somewhat weaker buy from uh, Norway and seems like Kazakhstan wants to exploit that and go for a fast A take. Works Hobbit out initially, Rain. First two kills and well there you go, they're in the A site. Incredible and Fitch as well behind enemy lines. He's going to hear the footsteps rotating over towards the site as well so he is going to be the man to watch because this leaves three players on the actual site but his flank down towards the player on truck. He'll tag him up and drop down Corny's Lex now coming in towards A main. They need to deal with Polly because he's the flanker for Norway. And other than that, it's just currently Kala who has worked his way up towards Fork. He's going to find a headshot actually as he pushes A main. He gabs two. Somehow that's not covered by the teammates. In Kazakhstan, they're going to be losing two players suddenly. I mean, the bomb is still down, of course, but with Kala grabbing another kill, this one's looking doable. Polly dropped out to the headshot of Hobbit. Hobbit, he needs to come up huge here. Kali drops the bomb, taps it, misses the shoulder peak shot, and that's going to solidify it. Hobbit coming in big for his team. A 4K in the round, and the man has made it to 30 frags so far. Still I mean, has time to play with as well, as he's looking to get more damage done. But, I mean, that's a little bit of a, a scary situation where Hobbit's playing so passively on side that squeaky that the player inside Highway is allowed to get up Forklift for free and then in through A main behind those two players. From a 4v2 to a 2v2 and then a 2v1. Very scary stuff, but somehow Kazakhstan hangs on. And it's Hobbit to find another kill at the opener as Norway tries to aggress mid, tries to boost the player up. One of them's caught in the process. And now Kazakhstan has a minute and a half to slow down the pace of this round and take it with ease. I mean, Hobbit is playing out of his mind. He gets a double entry into the A site in the last one, gets the one to clutch it. A quad in total. I mean, Rain, stop it. Stop the legal nonsense. And Skirk is from the back. No. Oh, if he got that kill on Fitch, uh, that could have been a round for uh, Norway, but uh, Fitch survives on 3 HP, and now it's uh, going to be uh, a lot of it on Polly, who's the lone man in the B side. The thing is, he needs not to peek against an AWP. He didn't know that. He gets taken down, and now, well, pretty much uh, Corny and Rain. Rain needs to save Norway here once again. But Hobbit, I mean, just to end it, he's playing phenomenally. And as I said that, Rain takes him down, Hobbit drops the bomb, and 40 seconds into a round, we are uh, in a 2v2. Ooh, but they're running straight into Corny. Corny's gonna find two, and there he is. That's why they bring the man in for his ump oh spray. Oh my god. What is this game, Scrawny? <laughs> I don't know. I mean... I, I, I cannot comprehend what is happening, is but this... I'm going with the flow. Let's just mm. enjoy it while it lasts, because I don't know the next time we'll see something quite like this. Is this is the third round that Norway wins uh, on the CD side with only pistols. Yeah, they had a couple of SMGs this time, but all in all, uh, what, I, what I wanted to say, a uh, broken by, and they once again win it. 
And 14 to 10, Norway is still in, the, in this uh, game, but Kazakhstan once again recognizing that uh, Norway's buy is going to be uh, somewhat weak. They're gonna go for a fast play. Zlex is going to find a nice headshot on Rain, opens it up, and Kazakhstan once again has the lead. He's gonna get pop flashed. Uh, is he gonna get through the smoke? No, decides to stick into the stick in. Uh, the smoke and try and find something on short. Skirk is gonna peek and Zlex oh no. with another headshot getting a double kill on A. And now Norway needs to react. Kale and Corny, they need to go for a push B. They're gonna spot that uh, no one is there, but um, they don't know Adrian is actually there. Just a bit further down. And it's going to be a B, uh, it's going to be a, a, a B attack, but the thing is they got fooled because they didn't see anyone um, close to B. Kelly finds a kill on Adrian, but Hobbit takes him down. Hobbit chimes in once again. It's going to be Polly and Corny, the two guys from Epiphany Vault. They need to make it work uh, for Norway. Polly, so far, AWP, he had some uh, good kills, but this time he's coming from Vents, and that's not a favorite position when you have an AWP. Corny coming from CT. Mo is waiting for them from the site. And they have uh, Fetch watching for that flank. Paul is going to get spotted, and I mean, yeah, it's 14 to 10, and we're giving them that 15 point, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, try and save those two guns. They opt not to, and it's going to be five map points for Kazakhstan. Finally, I mean, I, what am I talking about? Norway is here on pistols. Rain has a deagle. They're going to win this one. No, right? that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count them out. I'm, I'm, I'm done expecting things, but... Adren at least to find one, so it's looking like Kazakhstan might finally do it before Kali goes in through the squeaky push. He'll find an entry frag back. Skirk as well now trying to take the fight as Rain uses the Deagle once more to take another kill. It is a 3v3, but with AK's armor and utility, there is no reason for Kazakhstan to lose this. Now, oh, Kali, he's trying to grab a weapon and Moo's gonna push. Again, trying to take these duels. Last two players incredibly lit. Both players trying to fall on back. Corny's still committing to this forklift, but that AK-47 in the hands of Kalistar has already fallen towards the truck. And now he's might head out towards the B site, which would be a very good call as Kazakhstan has started to head the bomb in that direction. But again, remember his health is incredibly abysmal. If he's manages to find the entry though, he could very well do this. Fitch with his teammates. So Kazakhstan not making the mistake of peeking one at a time, but instead using a unit until Mu, he is dropped out of the round. Kale with a very good timing manages to to take the engagement still a 2v2 still health advantage for the side of Norway and yet the utility continues to be expended that flash or smoke grenade will at least buy a bit of space this is going to let Kali try to work out towards headshot but Hobbit you can see him already holding that angle the flashbang this is going to delay things and these players have to pick up the pace they don't have a kit Fitch with a headshot through the edge of the box the refrag coming back from Kala he's looking for the kill towards Hobbit but he'll be denied and Kazakhstan finding themselves in victory. Yeah, how convenient that Hobbit got, gets the last kill of the game. Uh, I'm not sure how many he got throughout the game. Uh, was about 30, right? 34. Yeah, just Hobbit having an amazing game. And Kazakhstan winning this one 16 to 10. The predictions were wrong, um, considering the sides, but the result was, uh, was, was, was correct. Uh, thank you, Scrawny. Uh, let's go back to the studio and see what uh, Rema has to say about this.